how you doing, Econ students? So today we're going to be talking about how to write the perfect essay in Econ. This video is indispensable for people on the IB or the AP or A-level courses in economics. And it will be particularly important for people on the IB course who are uh, preparing their internal assessment right now. Um, okay, so let's crack on. So the formula I'd like you to reuse in every essay you do in economics is DD, okay? So I'll go through what each uh, letter means. D stands for definitions. That's going to be your first focus of your essay. Then is going to be your example, an explanation of your example. Then it's going to be uh, an explanation of the example of why it's uh, related to the economic concept. Then you're going to hit the diagram and then you're going to evaluate uh, the topic or the uh, policy introduced and then you're going to introduce some evidence to back those claims up. Okay, so we'll go through an example essay. So a really topical issue right now is the tax on sugar. Um, so across the world, many countries are trying to cut down sugar consumption and uh, to do this, they have introduced a sugar tax. So if you're in IB economics, I would go into Google News and search for uh, sugar tax. You'll find a range of articles that you can analyse and evaluate effectively. So let's have a think about that issue. So the first sentence you're going to um, talk about is a quick summary of the main issue or the main question. So say it's sugar tax, you quite simply just say um, this article is about or this question is about um, the sugar tax that's been introduced to cut the consumption of sugar in the UK or Mexico or America. Now we move on to the definitions part and that's the first D on DD. Um, now you're going to want to define the key economic uh, concepts related to this topic. Now so if it's sugar tax, you're going to want to uh, define market failure. Okay, so market failure is where goods are misallocated. In other words, too little or too much is either being consumed or produced. Okay, leading on from that. Um, the type of good we're talking about with sugar is a demerit good. Now, a demerit good creates spillover effects on a third party, and these spillover effects or spillover costs are also known as externalities. So there we've got three good definitions, okay? Uh, market failure, demerit goods, and externalities. Now an example, uh, sugar is an example of a demerit good with negative consumption externalities because sugar um, creates third party costs on society. Now think about what those third party costs are. Obesity, diabetes, the healthcare costs of these, dental care, and perhaps time taken off work for people who are living an unhealthy uh, lifestyle from, from uh, consuming too much sugar. Um, this can also be approached in terms of an information failure. So does everyone know about the dangers of consuming too much sugar? Uh, but maybe that's another topic that uh, perhaps your article focuses on. So we won't focus on that now. Um, so, once we've defined that and explained uh, why sugar is a market failure, we can then move on to the diagram. Okay, so now this diagram is a diagram showing negative externalities of consumption. Now don't get the two confused, consumption and production. Just remember that um, when it's a consumption externality, um, there are two demand lines because the demanders are the ones who are consuming the goods. Okay, so lots of students get uh, confused with this. There are no externalities or negative externalities for the production of sugar 
It's the actual cons act of consumption that creates negative externalities on society. Now, looking on the diagram, it's a little bit tricky, um, but you'll notice that the marginal private benefit on the diagram is greater than the marginal social benefit. Now, think that through. The private benefits of consuming sugar are greater than the social benefits. That means that there's a kind of negative benefits, I guess, of consuming sugar or costs. Um, and you'll also know, note that the socially optimal quantity and costs to society are lower than in the free market. So um, this creates a welfare loss. And welfare loss is where the free market equilibrium is greater than the marginal social benefits. Okay, so you can see that in the diagram. So I would, um, so when you're explaining the diagram, just go through it like what I've said. Remember to talk about each of the lines and the quantity and the price and the socially optimal quantity and price, okay? So how does a government go about fixing this? Now in the case of sugar, Governments have tried many things uh, over the years. Um, there's been education programs, advertising, um, and in this case, we're looking at what's called a Pigovian tax. Now, a Pigovian tax is um, a tax designed to reduce negative externalities, and that can be shown on the diagram here. So it's just a simple uh, tax diagram. There's, because it's a type of indirect tax, the supplier has to pay it. So the customer pays it through the supplier. So that's why there's a decrease in uh, supply. So, uh, and it shifts the S-curve um, to the left. So, the, um, so that's perhaps both the diagrams explain. So, yeah, there's a, by increasing, by decreasing the supply or shifting the supply line, you get higher costs and reduced quantity demanded. So hopefully, um, the amount um, of sugar that's demanded in the market is reduced significantly towards the socially optimal uh, quantity. So. What are the evaluation, the key evaluation points of this tax? So first, uh, maybe a positive um, for the sugar tax, and you'll see that in many of the articles. Um, the government is able to raise a lot of revenue um, because a lot of sugar is, uh, is consumed in many, many different foods. And by putting this tax on those foods, um, the government will be able to learn um, earn significant amounts of money and they will justify this by saying that they will reinvest it into merit goods like paying for healthcare and uh, the external costs caused by uh, sugar consumption, like dental care, etc. etc. Um, the other good thing about it is that um, the sugar tax will reduce consumption and the external costs. So that will reduce the welfare loss and uh, hopefully go towards the socially optimal level of consumption. Um, okay, so there's two key arguments. Now, using the article, um, I would explore both of them more using evidence uh, from the, the article, okay? Um, the bad things about uh, the sugar tax is that perhaps it might create job losses. Now I know in my hometown there's a, a sugar drinks company who are really opposed to this tax um, and they petitioned the government and they still are petitioning the government against this tax because they know that by um, increasing the tax it will decrease consumption and they will decrease their uh, revenues. So there could be, as an effect of that, job losses. There's also another very important argument that you'll get extra credit for, 
is that this tax could be a regressive tax. Now, a regressive tax is uh, when you when the tax itself takes a larger proportion of the income of lower income groups than from higher income groups. Okay, so that means poorer people will be paying a larger proportion of their income on tax than uh, richer people. Now, this is true for other um, indirect taxes, such as taxes on cigarettes and other taxes like VAT, etc., etc. It's regressive because the poor pay more. Another argument um, against it is the nanny state argument, I guess. I'm not sure, really sure whether you should include this. This is maybe a minor argument, but um, should the government be legislating and telling people how to spend uh, their money? If people want to spend it on sugar or unhealthy goods, maybe they should be allowed to. Um, should the government be taxing people to stop them consuming it? And the last argument, I would say a very, very powerful argument, is elasticity. Will the tax have any effect? Now, sugar is a, a bit of a tricky one. Is it inelastic or elastic? I think in many countries, you'll find that sugar itself is inelastic because it's, it, it is in many, many foods and it often is habit forming as well. Okay, so will the tax have any effect? So if you put a large tax on it, will it reduce consumption that much? Therefore, um, there, if it doesn't reduce consumption to the social optimal level, what is the point in introducing the tax? Okay, and then the last argument is what I mentioned before about information failure. So if this uh, market failure is caused by the population having lack of information about that topic, is a tax the most effective way to stop people consuming sugar? Now, there are a whole other range of policy options the government uh, can use. They can invest in education programs. They can invest in advertising programs. And uh, they can even uh, invest in labelling, uh, introduce regulations on how much sugar can be uh, put in one item, um, all these kind of things are other options that the government can introduce. Um, so would they perhaps be a better way to address the market failure problem? Okay, so that's it. That, that's, that's how you would organize your essay. Uh, I've went through the definitions. I've given a good example. I've explained the example and the diagram. Um, and then we've evaluated arguments for and against uh, put, put introducing a sugar tax. And hopefully I've expanded on that and given some evidence. So the evidence will also come from your article. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you this video was uh, useful in writing your uh, essays and internal assessments. Thank you. Goodbye.